Hi, my name is Daniele Pagliari and I'm an assistant professor at Politecnico di Torino, Italy. It is my pleasure to present to you our work titled Crime, Input-Dependent Collaborative Inference for Recurrent Neural Networks. This is the outline of my presentation. I will start with some introduction and context, then I will briefly overview some related works. I will provide the motivation for uh, the proposed crime framework, which is then described in section 4. In section 5, I will show some experimental results and I will conclude in section 6. So the context of our work is the recent trend towards moving deep learning based applications from cloud servers closer to the source of data, so closer to IoT and nodes. This can provide several theoretical benefits uh, because it avoids the transmission of large amounts of data to the cloud and therefore it can provide lower latency, uh, more predictable latency and uh, also lower energy consumption. However, in practice, the optimal device on which to perform uh, deep learning inference uh, is actually time dependent. For example, if the goal is to minimize the total response time of the system, then the optimal choice depends on the time varying speed of all the involved compute devices. So the IoT and node, possible intermediate gateways and uh, cloud servers. In case of the server, for example, the uh, compute speed might change depending on the load of the server, so on the number of requests that it is receiving. Even more importantly, the optimal uh, device on which to perform inference depends on the time varying speed of the network connection between end nodes, gateways, and uh, servers, which influences the transmission time. So collaborative inference is a paradigm that tries to solve this problem by dynamically mapping deep learning inference tasks on a network of collaborating devices instead of uh, statically deciding uh, to perform all inferences on a single device. This approach has been studied for some years, but actually all uh, previous works focused only on feedforward neural networks such as fully connected or convolutional neural networks. A seminal approach is called neurosurgeon which proposed to partition the execution of a feedforward neural network between uh, an IoT and node and a cloud server in a layer-wise fashion. And in particular, the initial layers of the network are executed at the edge, while the final layers are executed in the cloud. And the uh, rationale of this idea is that, uh, for depending on the architecture of the neural network, sometimes the uh, intermediate feature map produced after executing some layers is smaller in size compared to the raw inputs. And therefore, it makes sense to execute the initial layers at the edge because this reduces the amount of data that has to be transmitted to the cloud, and therefore it can, be, uh, it can yield a lower total execution time or energy consumption. Of course, the partition point between edge and cloud uh, in neurosurgeon is changed dynamically depending on the current speed of the two devices and on the current speed of the network connection. Other works have then extended this initial idea, for example, considering multiple levels, not just end node and cloud, but also intermediate gateways, other kinds of partitioning, such as tile-based partitioning, and also ad hoc network architectures that try to improve this feature size compression and therefore uh, obtain further benefits from partitioning the execution. However, as mentioned, all these works focused only on feedforward neural networks. And in the next couple of slides, I will try to provide a motivation for the fact that recurrent neural networks need a different approach for collaborative inference. And the fundamental element to consider is that RNNs process uh, sequences of data of variable length, for example, text, speech, time series, etc. In the bottom of the slide, you can see an example of a popular RNN architecture, the long short term memory or LSTM, but uh, this also applies to other RNN uh, variants. Uh, where you can see that uh, at each time step, the network receives as input not only a new datum xt, but also the output from the previous time step. In case of an LSTM, we have two outputs, which are called hidden state and cell state. So at inference time, the network is actually unrolled a number of times, which is equal to the length of the processed uh, input sequence. Each of the unrolled copies involves exactly the same operations, which are large matrix vector products, plus the evaluation of some activation functions. And therefore, it is reasonable to assume that for a given device, the uh, execution time of each step and the power consumption would be more or less constant throughout the steps. Uh, moreover, due to the dependency between the different steps, it is very difficult to uh, implement inter-step parallelism in RNNs. And therefore, globally, the total inference time and energy consumption 
uh, of an RNN can be expected to grow linearly with the input length n. This is confirmed by the graph on the right, where we have uh, profiled the execution of uh, an RNN inference on three different compute devices for different input lengths. The RNN and devices will be detailed later in the experimental results, but you can see that all three curves are linear. However, the curves relative to the gateway and cloud device have been shifted up, and in order to explain why, we need some further elements. First, we need to consider that RNN inputs are typically smaller than other neural network inputs, and in particular CNNs. For example, considering natural language processing, it's easy to encode even a long sentence of text with just a few hundreds of bytes. On one hand, this eliminates the compression effect at intermediate layer outputs that we have seen before for other types of neural networks. So in case of RNNs, intermediate layer outputs are typically larger in size than the inputs. And uh, therefore, it doesn't make sense for these networks to partition the execution of a single inference between multiple collaborative devices. What does make sense is to decide for each entire inference which is the optimal device to execute it. Another consequence is that the transmission time is typically dominated by the uh, round trip time of the network connection, which, which adds an almost fixed latency cost to the total response time of the system, which is roughly independent on the input length n. And this is why we have shifted up the curves relative to gateway and cloud to simulate the effect of the node to gateway latency and gateway to cloud latency. So shifting up the curves uh, allows us to demonstrate the rationale of our proposed framework. Because if you consider all three curves together, including the effect of the transmission time, it's easy to see that for short inputs, the lowest total execution time is obtained processing them locally, while for longer inputs, it makes sense to offload the, the inference to another device. In particular, up to this point, it makes sense to offload to the gateway, and for even longer inputs, it makes sense to offload to the cloud. Critically, these break-even points uh, will change dynamically uh, at runtime, depending on the relative speed of the different compute devices, and um, even more importantly, on the time-varying speed of the network connection between them. So based on these observations, we have developed a framework called Collaborative RNN Inference Mapping Engine, or CRIME, which tries for each input to find the optimal device in the network of collaborative devices to um, execute RNN inference. The framework is fully distributed, and it supports any number of devices. In particular, we model the network of collaborative devices from the point of view of the source of data, so the end node, as a DAG, in which each node represents uh, a device and edges re represent direct network connection between uh, different devices. Each node in the network is able to perform a full RNN inference and it receives an inference request either directly from data in case of the end node or from another device in the network. And when it receives this request, it, it autonomously decides whether to handle it locally or to offload it to another device in the network. And it does it based on a set of models. So uh, assuming that the goal is to minimize the total response time of the system, then each node will store a local model of its own inference time, then a set of remote uh, models that refer to all directly connected device, devices in the, in the network and um, contains the best execution time that could be obtained by offloading to those devices. And finally, a set of models of the uh, network connections between the, 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 this node and the directly connected nodes. All these models depend on the uh, length of the process inputs n. Based on the analysis done in the motivation section, local execution time models in CRIME are linear because we have seen that RNN inference uh, time is linearly dependent on the input length uh, n. This also makes the model simple to store and to transmit to neighbor nodes when needed. Uh, the mapping decision performed by each node is composed of two steps. Without going into mathematical details, first we find the best remote device among the directly connected ones, so the one that uh, could obtain the lowest total execution time, and then we select between local execution and offloading to that device simply by comparing the uh, predicted execution time in the two cases. So while local models are linear, remote models are actually piecewise linear. And uh, 
The reason is that they encode the best possible mapping decision that the successor node in the DAG could uh, perform. In order to explain this better, let's see an example. Imagine that this is the DAG structure that we are considering. Node V2 has three options when it receives an inference request. It can either process it locally, and in that case, uh, the local execution time model is this blue curve, or it can offload the request to node V3, and uh, in this case, the model is this green curve where we have the effect of the transmission between node 2 and node 3, and then the execution on node V3, or it can offload to V4, obtaining this uh, red uh, estimate. Uh, so clearly the best mapping choice depends on the input length n and because of that the model that uh, v2 will transmit back through the DAG to uh, its predecessor v1 to be used as a remote model is simply the best of these three curves which is this piecewise linear orange curve. In this way v1 can then uh, autonomously decide uh, between performing an inference locally or offloading to v2 without knowing the details of uh, the choices available at v2. So it doesn't even need to know that v2 is connected to v3 and v4. It just knows that this is the best um, response time that v2 can uh, provide depending on the input length. Of course, both execution time and transmission time models may become outdated. So to deal with this uh, possibility, first of all, each node uh, continuously updates its own um, local execution time model by monitoring the locally performed inferences and periodically refitting the linear curve. Moreover, uh, each node also transmits a copy of its uh, piecewise linear best mapping choice model to predecessors in two uh, cases. First, when one of the predecessors uh, offloads an inference request to the current node, the, together with the result of the inference, the node will also return the updated model, which can be encoded in a very compact format and we call this piggybacking. Moreover, when uh, the node discovers, uh, notices that the last model transmitted to predecessors differs from the current model uh, more than a threshold, then it broadcasts the new model to all its predecessors at the same time. This slide just reiterates that while we have seen mostly examples uh, where the goal was to minimize the total response time of the uh, RNN inference, uh, similar mechanisms can be used in CRIME also to minimize the energy consumption of the source node. So we have tested CRIME with these three uh, devices, which are representatives respectively of IoT and nodes, gateways and cloud servers, and with these uh, simple yet realistic DAG structures. In all our experiments, we consider only pre-trained neural networks, so we didn't do any custom uh, training or architectural modification, and we focused on different types of LSTM uh, networks and on these three uh, applications. So CRIME is written in Python and it has very low uh, execution time overheads even on the Cortex-A devices which are the least powerful devices considered in our experiments. Uh, in, our, in the experiments all inferences are executed on the actual devices and the only thing that is simulated is the network connection uh, which is done just to make our results uh, easier to reproduce. And we uh, consider either constant uh, network connection speeds when we do some um, analysis, but also real connection profiles, so time-varying profiles from the RIFE Atlas uh, database. We compare CRIME against single device mapping uh, approaches, so approaches that perform all inferences on the same hardware, and also against an ideal Oracle policy, which is a policy that is able to uh, always select the best uh, device for inference without being affected by all the possible sources of error that are uh, present in crime, such as the inherent variability of the uh, execution time of RNN inference even for the same input length, or the presence of outdated execution time or transmission time models, etc. So this table summarizes the results that we obtain for the simplest possible uh, DAG structure where we have only one end node and one cloud server and for uh, different combinations of RNN and uh, dataset. Uh, and you can see that in all cases we are able to significantly reduce the uh, total execution time of uh, a set of inferences with respect to both uh, a solution that always performs uh, inferences at the edge and a solution that always offloads inferences to the cloud. And this is obtained by keeping the short inputs uh, locally and offloading only the long inputs in a way that is adaptive to the changing connection uh, 
uh, speed uh, and also compute speed of the different devices. Uh, importantly, you can also see that the uh, increments uh, in terms of total execution time with respect to an ideal Oracle policy is very little and it is lower than 1% in all cases. This plot shows visually the mapping decisions performed by CRIME for a slightly more complex DAG structure in which we also have an intermediate gateway. Uh, and in particular, it shows for each input length the percentage of uh, uh, inferences that are performed uh, in the different uh, compute devices. So you can see that for short inputs, uh, short inputs are always um, kept locally at the end node, while very long inputs are always offloaded to the cloud. Uh, but the most interesting is uh, what happens for uh, intermediate lengths, where you can see that uh, sometimes, uh, in this case, for example, sometimes we perform inference locally at the end node and sometimes we offload to the gateway. Or in this case, for instance, sometimes we perform it at the gateway and sometimes we offload it to the cloud server. And uh, this depends on the current speed of the network connection between the different devices. Another example of the adaptive, uh, adaptive mapping performed by CRIME is shown in this slide for, uh, again, a slightly more complex DAG in which, in this case, we have two alternative cloud servers that we can select. Um, on the top, you can see the latency of the connection between the different uh, devices in the DAG over time. And in, uh, in the bottom graph, you can see the mapping performed by CRIME. And for instance, you can see that uh, when suddenly the connection between the gateway and the second cloud server becomes uh, suddenly faster, then CRIME immediately starts to map a higher number of uh, inferences to that device, because now that device becomes more convenient if the goal is to minimize the total response time of the system. Finally, this slide summarizes the results that we obtained for these slightly more complex DAG structures, where again you can see that for most combinations of RNN and dataset we are able to uh, significantly reduce the uh, total execution time uh, with respect to uh, any single device static mapping. And also we have uh, low uh, overheads with respect to an Oracle policy. So in conclusion, we have shown that collaborative inference for RNNs de requires dedicated solutions that are significantly different from those proposed for feedforward the networks. And we have proposed CRIME, which is a simple yet flexible framework that enables uh, collaborative inference uh, using RNNs almost in a plug-and-play fashion, in the sense that the system is fully distributed, there is no central control, and there is no need to modify the networks or the inference engine in any way. You just need to wrap the inference execution inside the crime code, which will then decide automatically whether to perform the inference locally or to offload it to another device in the network. Uh, our future works will, ex will include the extension of the crime framework to other types of sequence processing uh, neural networks and in particular transformer-based architectures. With that, I concluded and I thank you all for listening.